Hi guys, welcome back to another episode of Mr. H Makes. This time I'm back with another work in progress video. And this will be a whirlwind tour of how to achieve cinematic looks in iClone with some post effects and lighting tips. There's also a bonus lighting trick at the end on how to replicate the default character creator lighting in CC3 and bring it over into iClone. If you don't know it, you're going to want to hang around for that. But right now we're going to be focusing on how we're going to get from the picture on the right to the picture on the left. So let's get started. So I began by changing the background in the project settings, the default gradient to one of my choosing. And I eventually found what I was looking for in the media section uh, and dragged and dropped it. The only problem now is that as the camera moves in and out, there is no real depth there since it's just a 2D background. Uh, but I'll be fixing that later. But at the moment, what I am fixing is the shadows. I'm just uh, softening them, giving them more detail so that I get the desired look that I'm after. I also added, tried adding some props, but decided that it really wasn't worth it, um, at least not in this case. And then I went over to the fun stuff, to the lookup tables and the various film effects. Now you can just double click to apply them. And they basically allow you to color correct uh, the final look that you want. And you can obviously uh, stack them and tweak the contribution of the particular effect. You can switch them on and off, which ones you want to keep, which ones you don't. Uh, so that's the before and after at the moment. So by using this method, you can define the filmic look th that you want. Uh, you can emulate your favorite directors or create something completely new. You can also go into minute details and, and select what colors you want to remove, emphasize which colors you want to keep, uh, and you can just keep on adding effects and tweaking them till you really dial down what you want. You can also save these LUTs and load them on different projects so you can maintain a consistent look. I would usually use something like DaVinci Resolve or After Effects to do my color correction, but I'm quite impressed by the level of detail and the flexibility that iClone has. Uh, previously, I'd only really seen it as an animation tool, but the more I muck around with it, the more doors seem to open. Uh, and this is definitely one of them, uh, being able to specify your look to the detail that you can. So since we have a 2D background in there, uh, we don't really have such a, a good depth of field. Um, so I decided to replace that and add a 3D background. And I found the best way to do this was to go to the prop section and use a wall and just apply the texture to that. You'll have to bump up the self illumination most likely and fiddle about with the tiling to get the look that you want. Turning our attention to the depth of field, I target the eyes and then adjust the sliders accordingly to get the amount of blur that I want. Uh, now that we've got the 3D elements in the scene, we get a more realistic uh, rendition of how the depth of field should be. Whereas before, not so much with a 2D background, or at least that's what I found. 
Uh, I also added a bit of blur to try out typical post-process editing tricks to try and emulate a film look uh, because usually when you do computer graphics it's very clean but if you want to replicate film uh, you need to add these little tricks like blur and grain or in this case static noise I had pretty good results doing this in uh, 1080p but when I tried in Ultra HD the render was not very good uh, for some reason the 3840 by 2160 looked pretty poor uh, there's probably some setting I've yet to discover but I would watch out for that if you are thinking of rendering out ultra high def While noodling around in the look film styles, I found a moonlight setting which allows you to create a nighttime look with a single click, which is pretty cool. Okay, now it's time for our bonus lighting tip. And this is a ridiculously simple way to essentially port your CC3 light settings over to iClone. The astoundingly complex method is to change the CC3 file extension, CC project to the iClone file extension, iProject. You should probably duplicate your file first though. And that's all for this video folks. Hope you found it useful. You can find the final video with Arthur in all his glory linked at the end of this video and in the comments below. You've been watching Mr. H Makes. I'm Mr. H wishing you all the best for the week ahead. And I'll see you at the next video.